Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Awwazu billahi min shaitanir rajeem. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. Walhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. Wa salati wa salam ashraf al mursaleen Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad al Mustafa sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Bi madadakum wa nazarakum Sayyidiya Rasulul Kareem. Fatiullah ati Rasul ulul amri minkum. And a reminder always to myself, ana abdukul ajeezu, da'eefu, miskeenu, zalimu, jahal. And by the grace of Allah that we are still in existence. This understanding that and the style in which we are teaching based on energy, most easiest common denominator for da'wah. You talk salah, zakah, all these terms you lose a lot of people. They think of all the rules of religious practices and alhamdulillah Allah and inspire for Prophet give isharat out to awliyaullah and those whom are trained under awliyaullah that do a da'wah and teach. And they give ilm al duni wa hikmati bi salihin two rivers that are flowing that they have to have this river of knowledge ilm al duni that they're not repeating books to people. Because what's the benefit of a book to you that I didn't write? If I'm repeating from my book it's the knowledges that Allah gave as a trust within our heart from the trust and the treasures of Sayyidina Muhammad And that Allah because of those knowledges He establishes, He establishes that servant with hikmat is salihin that they're clearly salihin and Allah has given them a hikmah on how to use that knowledge and that knowledge keep reappearing in different ways. That's you know miraculous reality of Naqshbandiyya from the heart of Sultan and Awliya Imam Shaykh Abdul Faiz al-Daghistani, Sultan and Awliya Shaykh Muhammad Nazim Haqqani, Imam Shaykh Muhammad Adil, Imam Shaykh Isham Kabani, Shaykh Adnan Kabani. And these are the Buzurga, the big, big awliyas of this tariqah. They're miracle. They take the reality, keep flipping it in different ways so that it's for each time and every moment there's something applicable. That for us to understand from the energy level that when Allah is, is teaching us in Surat Al Fat, 48th surah, is where the baya is coming from. That the one whom breaks his oath, breaks it to his own detriment. And people may think, what are you talking about? If you're not thinking from the world of light, you're, you're talking, oh, I broke an oath and Allah is going to warn me that my soul is in danger to that oath. And what I thought maybe the oath was that I was supposed to you know go to zikr and, and read from this shaykh and do like this and do like that. It doesn't make sense to the mind because if you think from the world of form it has you know, I, it, how could it possibly affect your soul? So that's what they described last night, no, no, no. This world has nothing to do with your form. This association of only Allah and their guidance has very little to do with your form. They're not gather, gathering the cattle and trying to herd them in one direction and everyone's form is running in different directions. But their souls are not. Your body can run where it wants but your soul is in an association with them in the world of light. And when Allah partitioned that reality and Prophet described the world of souls like an uns, familiarity. They're like marshalled armies, they gather in groups of familiarity. Why? Because that group they're in that malakut in that reality and that's where the teaching is taking place. Guidance gives permission, they begin the teaching, those souls are now in that association with those shaykhs and then partitioned with their representatives, their representatives, their representatives. Very little of 
that has to do with the world of form. Then when Allah is warning that when you break your oath it's to the detriment of your soul and one of its understandings is when we come to the understanding of energy that when children are born and young they just came from paradise, they're loaded, loaded with angelic lights and angelic power. One devils harm children because of what? Because of that angelic light and because of that angelic reality and because the purity of that light and the purity of its energy. If they're diamonds and rubies and by the time they grow they become charcoal because dunya takes an effect. You know, they're born, their feet are like paradise, they have their own fragrance. You kiss the sole of the child's foot, you're kissing paradise. He just walked there, he was walking around in that reality that child. As soon as they become older their feet smell horrible. Why? <laughs> now because bad character is coming in, the dunya is now affecting. So it means that these children an understanding of energy is when they're smooth they're pure. And just basic science in school teaches you positive and negative. So we don't have to give complex Islamic words, it's positive and negative energy. Every time in our life think that who's the positive, more positive and who's the negative? And where will the negative energy go in your science class? Negative always attaches itself to a positive charge and anything with a positive charge it collects negative charges because another positive charge it repels it. Positive and positive they don't come, positive and positive they don't come, right? So two shaykhs they don't sit in the same area, they, they repel each other. But the shaykh sits with the students because they're filled with negativity and keep pulling, they're pulling their negativity, throwing their negativity, virtual, physical, whatever into that reality of awliyaullah, not me, I'm just a donkey and the image should have two shaykhs right here, very powerful shaykhs. If I put them above the head they say, oh why you put like that or if you put them here they say, why you put like that? You can make nobody happy but the two faces of these shaykhs are what you should focus on, on that broadcast, they have immense power. So means this energy of positivity it attracts negativity. So when children are born and children are young and every guest comes over to kiss that child they're going to make them to be sick. Every time they touch the child it's taking on a negative energy from people. That's why when they're first born 40 days nobody sees the child, he's in isolation. It just came from Divinely Presence and the khalwa of the womb and then 40 days he'll do a khalwa upon the earth to readjust and align himself, at least give him a time or her time safe from people. They don't come, they don't kiss, never kiss on the lips the child, never kiss around the face, all these energies are going to go upon that child. When we understood that from just energy, you don't have to quote a hadith, you don't have to quote ayatul Qur'an, it's all in this understanding of Qudra. So then they absorb energies. So a reminder that when we come to zikr and when Allah destines us to be in the association whether in person or through live, the baya is pulling all negativity. As a result of pulling the negativity then whatever collective negativity is in the home and on that family, whomever is watching and participating in the tariqah 
they're pulling that negativity and bringing it to how the shaykhs want to dispose of that negativity. Just pure positive charge pulls negative charge. So when you join the tariqahs, when you join the associations, when you're following a shaykh, real shaykh, all these burdens are being pulled from you and you find your children to become healthier because they're not now carrying the burdens in your home. Because in the home they're the most positive charge, they're pure, they're mazloom, they've done nothing wrong. If you're not in the association many times they're carrying the burdens and that's why people have many children who are sick because they go out and do whatever they want and their sickness comes into the home and their halaqa is just what they have of their home. And their burdens are being thrown onto the children. As they grow older then each one is throwing the burden upon themselves, on everyone. Their burdens are popping back and forth. So we, we begin to train in understanding positive and negative charge. So when I'm with the shaykh and with the tariqah they're pulling my waste and garbage. So they're garbage collectors, they're pulling it disposing of it through how they've been trained and taking that burden. So when Allah warning, don't break it to the, to the detriment of your own soul because now you're going to carry your burden. You break it and say, I'm not going to attend, I'm not going to sit with them, I'm not going to watch, no problem but be careful that now you're bringing that energy and it's just staying in your home, just staying and rotating around the home. And as a result it begin to go to whom is the most innocent within that home and that becomes the children. They begin to get sick, they begin to carry these burdens that were being thrown out before are now just washing around that household. And that's why you see the people who broke away from tariqah have many difficulties, many difficulties. So that they learned that don't break the lifeline. When they get older that's something different, then testing becomes and everyone has their own grave. Each child has his own grave when he's 17, 18 years old. You can't force anybody to, to live a life that you wanted to live, that's something different. They choose whatever Allah has written for their destiny. But we're talking about the children whom we are in custody of as children, as minors. That that negativity begins to dress upon them when we make these choices. So at just one level Allah is describing that how much difficulty been taken from people, how many lights are dressing upon people. When you cut that charge and cut that connection now that negativity swirls around in your own environment and the first to be affected by that difficulty are the children. When we understand positive and negative then we have a lot of answers ourselves now that you don't need to keep asking the shaykh, should I go here and should I go there? Should I do this and should I do that? So they would say then, where's the positive charge? If your practices are good and you're planning on going into a negative charged environment your answer is already clear. You don't need an Islamic fatwa, you don't have to understand halal and haram. Just say, if I'm going there there's going to be a lot of negative charges, I'm doing my positive practices, holy moly they're going to be dressing upon me, all the negativity is all of a sudden going to come on to me. So don't be surprised when you go home then angry, you go home agitated, you go home aggravated. The energy that you collect upon yourself manifests in many different ways. That's what's outstanding, astonishing that people don't understand that. If you pick up a negative charge Energy is such that if I send it into a bulb it makes light. If I send an energy charge towards the TV it makes a picture. 
If I send the energy charge to a radio it brings sound. Energy manifests in many different ways. So when they're talking about you pick up a negative charge and then the person's a bit kooky after that and they didn't understand why. It says, anytime your practices are strong and you go out and you go into environments where there's negativity, you come back feeling all sorts of weird thoughts, all sorts of weird emotions, all sorts of weird characteristics. Why? Because these energies within you are now manifesting and you're just a light bulb, you doesn't know whether to switch on, to yell, to scream, to do something bad. And that shows you one that you're not trained yet in how to do your awrad, your zikr so that these energies don't affect you and that you're able through your zikr to process them, you're able through your showering to understand that, I have to shower off my dunya. You go to a mall, you pick up energy, you come back into your home and yell and scream and get angry at everyone, you're crazy. Your energy is manifesting and you don't know how to, to handle it. You have to be trained, you do your zikr, you do your practices, you go shower if you feel that, that something was on, not right and not smooth about that energy. And emotions, when somebody is severely depressed that's an immense negative energy upon them. When you come in touch with them and then you go home and you say, I don't know why I'm feeling so depressed. We are very spiritual beings. You become transparent like a, you become like a mirror where Prophet exactly said, you'll be a mirror to your brother and sister, to the believer. Means if the light of belief is coming into your heart you'll mirror people. If they're depressed they throw it onto you and you go home depressed. But the shaykhs are trained to work through that depression, make their zikr, make their istighfar, be patient unto Allah relieve this energy from them. And that's how they're cleaning but they don't look for it and they don't want it and if Allah have to send it then they send it. But we are an energy being and the more we understand that then we try not to erupt and we try not to fight with people as soon as we went out and, and went out into the world and come back and fight with people. I mean you know what they describe as insanity is that you, you, you cross the road and you get hit by the car and the next day you say, I'm going to cross the road again and you get hit by a car again. You say, I'm going to go cross the road again. Then doctor come and say, you're insane, technically you're insane. So why? So because you do the same things and each time you're expecting a different result. If you're crossing the road, you're getting hit, don't cross the road. You must be going somewhere else to do it. So I mean every time you go out you want to come back and become angry and every time you interact with somebody you want to become angry. It's not mature, it's not the way of tariqah and so they, they simplify everything with the teaching of energy. If we really understood the energy we understand how we're collecting it, how to dispose of it, our zikr. For these energies is istighfar throughout the day, astaghfirullah al-azim wa atubu ilayk. From a thousand, ten thousand, astaghfirullah al-azim wa atubu ilayk because istighfar washes negativity. Istighfar washes negativity that astaghfirullah al-azim, Ya Rabbi bi sifat al-azim that nothing comes close to the might and majesty of Allah wipe it away. And Allah opens as a tajalli, Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. I'll forgive and wash away that difficulty with Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem. And when they're making their istighfar all day long, by mid afternoon they're switching and asking now to be perfumed by the beautific fragrance of Sayyidina Muhammad. Because you were washed before you go to see Prophet you don't come with all your dirtiness and crazy character. So istighfar, washing, cleaning, now I'm ready, Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad. And they keep making their salawats upon Sayyidina Muhammad to be beautified and fragrant so that their tongue becomes fragrant 
with the love of Sayyidina Muhammad and the Prophet ridha and satisfaction to dress their heart and soul. We pray that Allah give us more and more understanding of just energy. Then we won't make the crazy choices. When shaitan comes to, to play with you, to keep you away from that association whether in presence or on live, he's bringing you harm. He's, he's cutting you from an immense rahmah and putting upon you and your home and your household an immense difficulty. Subhana rabbika rabbal izzata amma yasifoon wa salaamun al mursaleen wa hamdulillahi rabbil alameen wa hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.